Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 16, The Half Elf Godkin. Of course, because the maximum amount of HP differed between an ordinary human and a frost giant, the amount of recovery would appear to be different. However, they were in fact the same. Of course, because he hadn't taken his experiments that far, this was just a guess. This was based on Ains's knowledge of Yggdrasil, which was the closest to the laws of this world. Therefore, it didn't mean that there was no chance that the content of what he said would match. If I think about it, it might have been better for me to say that I have a taste disorder at the beginning. If he had, he wouldn't be having this trouble right now. That said, if he had told that sort of lie, he would probably have ended up bearing some other burden. Even if I regret it right now, there's nothing I can do about it. What I need right now is something to deceive him with, something he'll accept, but nothing's coming to mind. It was a failure on my part for thinking that I had deceived him well, and for not thinking up additional excuses. Ings moved the illusory face and slowly closed its eyes. Since it was just an illusion, his field of vision remained as it was, unchanged. Since those two had told him that, your face is motionless, like you're wearing a mask, he had been intentionally closing his eyes from time to time. Because, the parts of his face not concealed by the cloth were his eyes and eyebrows the places where emotions were most visible Ains himself hadn't noticed that it would be a little unsettling if he focused his vision on one point and didn't move an inch from that point. Therefore, under the supervision of the twins, he practiced and practiced. Now, if he consciously did it like this the process of changing his expression was clumsy and he couldn't possibly do it, unconsciously he had improved his skills enough to somehow look like he had closed his eyes. How had he reacted to Ains's silence? The chief pharmacist continued. Furthermore, doing this kind of thing is, that's right. Productivity drops. That's what it means. For the amount of medicine I can make in a day to decrease, is a huge loss for this village. It was a sound argument. Because there were a number of druids in the village, though they were of lower position, they could generally heal urgent injuries. However, those who needed the pharmacist's medicines were the hunters and others who spent their time outside of the village where the druids were not. If a druid accompanied the hunters, they might be able to help them when they were injured. However, at the actual hunting grounds, a druid who wasn't good, a concealment, would be a burden on them. From the perspective of someone, without much hunting knowledge like Ains, he would consider saying, why don't you just create a base camp and have the druids on standby there? But this village had its own rules. In most cases, that kind of thing was born from the results of trial and error. They had no knowledge of that practice in this sea of trees, and there was no way he could tell them that in his position as an outsider. In the first place, who can claim that there are no alterations to the medicinal herbs when placed on this dish, right? These scales and dishes were old ones used by the Bear family, who as far as Ains knew, were the most outstanding alchemists in this world. Since even they were using something like this, there probably shouldn't be any problems with them. Of course, Ains had already told him that. He had told him that these were things he had received from his master, so there shouldn't be a problem. But even still, the chief pharmacist persisted. Did that master of yours use the same kinds of medicinal herbs? You can't assert that there have been no changes in these medicinal herbs, can you? When Ains was asked that, he was hard-pressed to give him an answer. In fact, he would have to ask how they could have changed. So far as it goes, in regards to that, I said before that it is believed that there are no differences. You said is believed, didn't you? That's not a guarantee now, is it? In other words, not even you yourself have the conviction that it absolutely will not happen, which means you're not confident, right? Are you okay with that? Medicine can sometimes harm people. It might change into something that harms people because of the alterations caused by placing it in this dish, right? First of all, I believe that will not happen. Of course, that may be true. However, to investigate if that is true, you will need to make all the medicines and confirm it, won't you? First and foremost, when you investigate, if there was a minute change, you might not know immediately that it had been altered. Then, when a few days or weeks have passed, it might change significantly. If it were used on a person in critical condition, a life that could have been saved might change to one that cannot, because of that small alteration, might it not? A sound argument yet again. Might, well he argued against that hypothetical, Ains didn't have any proof that could absolutely declare that he was wrong. Thus, it was impossible for him to win the argument. And adding on top of that, Ains's knowledge was just a thin veneer. This was bad. He couldn't come up with a hypothetical story based on his knowledge as pharmacist. If someone from the Bear family were here, they could probably immediately refute it. However, he couldn't back down here. Considering the possibility that he would be instructed to remember with his tongue, he really couldn't back down. 
If that is the case, please just do it like that, temporary master. I will carry the data back to the city, and as temporary master told me to, I will make all the medicine and investigate the various effects. Faster than the chief pharmacist could get a word out, Ains piled on his declaration. To give an opponent a chance to counterattack was the act of a fool. Incidentally, because Ains was a fool, he was constantly receiving his opponent's counterattack. He wondered if that was what they called friendly fire. Especially, from Demiurge. The number of pharmacists in the city isn't in the ratio as it is here. If I were able to gain their cooperation, I would be able to make a large amount of medicine at once, wouldn't I? Moreover, because there are various races living there, in order to investigate whether anybody can use them without any problems, I must also borrow the wisdom of the pharmacists of those various races, mustn't I? The chief pharmacist looked just a little uncomfortable. The recipes of the medicines passed on to one's own tribe be they secret or otherwise being spread to many people wouldn't be a pleasant thing, would it? Ains agreed with that. Rather than it being about protecting a vested interest, giving knowledge to beings who might become your enemies was sheer stupidity. In fact, even Ains didn't seriously intend to do that. That was just some appropriate words he weaved to trick him. Ains had also been taught this by his friends. It was precisely because the fruits of knowledge were monopolized that they had value. Since it seems that you have no objections, temporary master, if you would, please continue. Upon receiving Ains's counterattack, the chief pharmacist raised his voice in what sounded like disagreement. However, it seemed like a decisive way to mount his own counterattack hadn't come to him. Surely drooping his shoulders, he once more began putting medicine herbs on the dish. His movements were swift. It would be tough for Ains to take notes while completing his own tasks like this. It appeared that that was exactly what his opponent was aiming for. Even though the chief pharmacist's own work was finished, if Ains wasn't finished with his, there was no doubt that he would give him a snide comment or something of that sort. Rather than this being his attempt to say let's hurry up and finish this unpleasant work, there was no doubt in Ains's mind that this was his revenge for being beaten in their argument. Don't you underestimate me. Certainly, there was probably no way he could win against the chief pharmacist, who had spent many years making medicine, in terms of speed. However, he had also spent the last few days next to him repeating the same, simple task over and over again. From the very beginning, he had no intention of admitting defeat. Ooh. While his fighting spirit burned in his heart, Ains also frantically, started his work. He capitalized on all of his experience up till now to instantly find the weights, that suited the dish of medicinal herbs he was handed. If he didn't have time to take notes, then he just had to pound the information into his head. Ains could never say that he had a keen mind, but that didn't mean his ability to remember things was non-existent. As Ains's speed increased, the chief pharmacist moved even faster. They were both wordlessly absorbed in their tasks as if they were competing against one another. If a cool-headed third party were there, they would absolutely have thrown in a quip or two. However, this is interesting. While Ains was remembering how to make the medicine, he thought about its effects. This medicine's effect is very weak. However, if the medicine and that method are used simultaneously, perhaps they'll have an unexpected synergy. To the players of Yggdrasil, using the absurdly large amount of data in the game to come up with new tactics was one of the most enjoyable things they could do. Ains no, Suzuki Satoru was no exception. Using the technologies of this world to create medicines that weren't in Yggdrasil revealed the hidden possibility that they could be used in new battle tactics. Using magic items rather than magic to compensate for your weak points. No, doing that would take time. Something that can be done in a much shorter period of time. In practice, he would probably have to verify whether or not there was any synergy between them. Even so, Ains felt excitement at the prospect of acquiring a new tactic. I already have a connection, if I said something, he would probably teach me a lot more things. The reason he hadn't done so was because up till now, Ains had been spending all of his spare time to study something far more different. He had left the acquisition of the technology of this world to Titus and everyone else. Frankly, managing an organization as state is impossible for me. Rather than doing that, wouldn't it be better for me to be placed in a position of technological research after all? Plus, I enjoy this more. He once again thought about what he had vaguely felt since the beginning, when he started learning about the medicines here. If Suzuki Satori had had an outstanding mind Ains didn't have one though, he would have learned them both well. However, that was not the case. Despite that, he had divided his efforts on a field that he himself wasn't good at, you could even say that it had been a waste of time. Until now, I was thinking about running away from work. No. People have areas where they're best suited to. When I return to Nazareth, I'll try requesting a department transfer from Albedo. But that, wouldn't that be a betrayal of the NPC's faith in me? As the guild leader and the person who dubbed himself Ainzul Gown, is that the right thing to do? 
I wonder what everyone would say. Ah. At the sudden halt of the chief pharmacist's hands movement, their contest and Ames's thoughts came to an abrupt end. The chief pharmacist turned around towards the entrance. Ames looked as though a smile of victory was about to appear on his face, but he immediately amended that and looked in the same direction. It wasn't as if anybody was there. In that case, he tried pricking up his ears.